We can fight against the silent killer diabetes only with long-standing and very effective medical onset. To focus on this topic, we have our next speaker who will join us virtually from Manipur, Dr. K. S. H. Ashoka Singh, famous endocrinologist, associate professor, Department of Endocrinology, J. N. I. M. S. And as a chairperson, we already have Dr. Guru Prashit Vattacharya and uh, Dr. Ajay Biswas. Over to you, sir. Visualize things. 
if the slideshow is not working. On the left side? Uh, actually, sir, we are not seeing the slideshow. Have you started the slideshow? Uh, please uh, go for the presentation mode. No, I am, I am in the slideshow now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Please, please uh, get into the slideshow, sir. I am in, in the slideshow now. Or I just can have a slideshow. Yes, but now it is coming, sir. Now the classification is come. Perfectly coming, sir. Please go on. Uh, sir. This is not a slideshow. Actually, you have to use this way, sir. Otherwise, the problem is not taking up. Uh, but this is acceptable. You can see the thing uh, with your pointer. If you can change the slides in the left side, you can see. Okay, okay. Uh, I'll be there. Is it changing now? Yeah. Slides are changing. Yes, it's changing. It's changing and it's showing. Okay, okay. Then I have to put this. This is actually not a slideshow. Uh, uh, okay. Sir, please so, continue, no problem. Please continue. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Then, uh, uh, out of after this uh, classification, what we need to uh, address here is specific types of diabetes which usually we tend to be ignored. Monogenic diabetes syndrome, such as uh, neonatal diabetes, majority ones in diabetes of the young, and the uh, exocrine uh, pancreas uh, etiology like cystic fibrosis, pancreatitis and drug or chemical reduced energy. These are the secondary diabetes of which are usually we do not. And most of the time, well, uh, because of the major chunk of diabetes is type of diabetes, but we often ignore this. Uh, uh, so this is just to get us out of the uh, uh, classification. That criteria, I need to go for di uh, diabetes uh, 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 confirmation. And here, what happens, and the site is important for all of us, because we have to screen the pre-diabetes and diagnose type of diabetes. In what setting we have to do, what are the criteria that are uh, needed to have um, uh, screening for pre-diabetes are that uh, persons, individuals who are overweight or obesity is one. Having first degree related to diabetes or high risk, rest, ethnicity, that's known to everybody, and history of CBD, that is having uh, hypertension, having clean dyslipidemia, and uh, women with uh, polycystic uh, ovary syndrome, and having sedentary lifestyle. These are all the criteria that we should, we sh we should uh, uh, subject a person for screening for pre-diabetes and diabetes. And patients with pre-diabetes, uh, uh, A1C uh, less than 5.7 should also be tested yearly, and women who are diagnosed with GTM should have lifelong testing at, uh, at least every three uh, years for all other patients. Testing should begin uh, at the case of 35 years. So, this is uh, just to have a glimpse of it. So, uh, coming to this uh, uh, problem of diabetes is that. We have to set some goals for the treatment of diabetes. Why we have to make goals is to prevent complications and optimize lifestyle uh, quality of life. And, uh, so uh, we are much uh, uh, spoken about uh, the quality of life because uh, ultimately, as the, as the diabetes as advances and the complexity of treatment and uh, that's all uh, bringing down the quality of life, but we have to take care of it. So we have to assess key patient characteristics first. Whenever we meet a patient of diabetes, we have to make a key patient characteristics like current lifestyle, we have to not eat comorbidities, whether there is a CBD or CKD or heart failure or clinical characteristics of AS and HBRC and diagnosis and issues such as motivation and depression because the, the person's uh, uh, first information about the mental uh, set uh, is also very important in the uh, future for uh, uh, diabetic control and uh, and uh, uh, living quality of life. So, uh, and we have to assess the socio-economic uh, content of the individual person. Well, that should be consideration for specific uh, issues that impact choice of treatment, like individualized HPLC target should be set, as already highlighted by the previous speaker, the uh, uh, relaxation of HPLC target in the elderly because of obvious uh, 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 reasons, and the impact on weight and the hypoglycemic uh, tendencies have to be assessed 
and the side effects of the medications that is prescribed also should be considered. The complexity of the thing that I have already looked at too, that the frequency, the com as the complexity of treatment is more and more, the adherence and the persistence is going to be lower. So we have to have, the, and we have to have a shared decision making with the patient and, uh, and making a uh, management plan, like the management plan should be specific and it should be measurable, measurable in the sense that every one see at, uh, at the onset that the diagnosis is, is nine, then we have to have a target of uh, uh, 7.5 within six months. Also, like this, I'm giving just for an example that it should be measurable and it is achievable and it should be realistic and it should be time, uh, uh, it should be time, uh, uh, time, time bound. <clears throat> it should be time bound and you should implement the uh, 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 management plan that has been ongoing monitoring and support system should include emotional well-being that the check the tolerability of medication and monitor glycemic status. And we have to review and agree on the plan implementation with the individual with the caregiver that is the comprehensive medical evaluation assessment of comorbidities. So not only that, we also need a past medical history that is uh, in terms of diabetic history, the family history, personal history of complications like common comorbidities, obesity, OSA, or liver uh, disease, high blood pressure or abnormal lipids. These are to be uh, accounted for and we have to have the very histories of changes in medical or uh, family history since last visit. These are to be recorded. So for chemotherapy, I have to, so doubt, uh, beyond doubt, that is a first line treatment treatment as agreed upon uh, is by many bodies and we are practicing also. There is metformin is still the first time of therapy. Then what is the discussion beyond this is that uh, along with comprehensive lifestyle therapy, there are other alternatives. Why alternatives? Because at the onset of diabetes there may be components of uh, many comorbid conditions, presence of cardiovascular diseases, atherosclerotic uh, uh, cardiovascular disease presence makes uh, things different because the preference is given to the SGLT2 inhibitors or GLP like GLP1 receptor agonists uh, already the, the properties was highly detected by, by probably Dr. Kausik already talked about all these uh, uh, SGLT2 uh, inhibitors. So I think uh, the, the, the discussion uh, where we are heading uh, forward is that <coughs> metformin though is the initial choice, we are having some alternatives. Why alternatives are made? Because the presence of these comorbidities uh, will uh, dictate to the use of either GLP-1 receptor agonists or sodium uh, uh, NGLT2 inhibitors. Because uh, uh, which are having cardiovascular protection and uh, proven uh, uh, CD uh, outcome uh, these molecules are the ones preferred. So when once uh, uh, monotherapy with uh, melphobin or something, uh, some other molecules are not enough or not adequate, then insulinization has to be uh, done. The, the one thing is that when one is contemplating insulin therapy, metformin, if otherwise not contraindicated, should be continued along with insulin for better uh, uh, glycemic and metabolic benefits. <coughs> so, uh, the paradigm is that early combination therapy is being considered in many of the forum and treatment initiation to extend the time to treat failure. Early introduction of insulin has also been encouraged by many studies having ongoing catabolic weight if symptoms of hyperglycemia are persistent and when A1C levels of more than 10 uh, or blood glucose level is more than 300. So of, overall, it should be a patient-centered uh, approach. And that's how uh, the choice of pharmacologic agents are to be chosen. We have to consider the effects of cardiovascular and renal comorbidities, efficacy and hypoglycemia, risk impact on weight, cost, and ex, uh, excess risk for side effects and patient preference. 
After all, this difference is also to be, to be uh, uh, highlighted and in, in, uh, so uh, these are to be considered for treating the uh, molecule. So the presence of heterovascularity cardiovascular disease, indicators of high cardiovascular risks, established in disease or heart failure, directly predicts the use of SGLT2 inhibitors or GLP1 receptor agonist. Hello? 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 Yes, sir, you are audible. Yeah, am I audible? Yes, sir, you are. Okay, 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 okay. okay. Mm. And in patients with type 2 diabetes, GLP-1 uh, receptor uh, agonist is preferred to insulin when, whenever there is a possibility if insulin is used combination with GLP-1 analog is also recommended. Recommendations for treatment intensification for patients not meeting treatment goals should not be delayed. This is one warning and medication regime, medication taking behavior has to be assessed periodically between 3 to 6 uh, months as a state as required. Clinicians should be aware of one thing of over basalization with insulin therapy because we are we keep on increasing the dose of basal insulin, whatever may be the molecule used. But uh, this has to be discouraged because we have other signals of over basalization of uh, uh, over basalization is that uh, uh, which uh, says that if this is the dose is more than 0.5 uh, IU per kg per, per day, then, uh, the, 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 then it is uh, considered as over mentalization and it is uh, uh, related by bedtime or morning or post pre prandial glucose difference and unaware or aware hypoglycemic episodes or, and giving a high glycemic variability. These are the indicators that patients have gone into over visualization, which is to be uh, uh, avoided. So there are so many uh, uh, proven uh, 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 molecules with uh, some of the FDA uh, black box uh, warning like uh, metformin uh, in terms of the, uh, efficacy, hypoglycemic episodes, weight change, and uh, in the presence of CB, ASCBD, or heart failure, they use uh, these are some of the properties and the cost, uh, at the cost or root of, and in the presence of renal events, the how to uh, use of progressive. In, so these are the parameters where we have to uh, consider in using metformin, either as you do inhibitors, GPP4, GLP1 receptor agonists or GPP4 inhibitors, all are here and uh, I need not go into uh, because it has been in black discussed. So including all this, if insulin is used, we have to be aware of injection site uh, uh, reactions, injection uh, site reactions. So uh, we have like example, thiojolic uh, diets, FDM backlog, the congestive heart failure for bioglutazone and rosiglitazone like this. So these are a uh, few of the points that I just wanted to uh, address. So which one should be the first uh, uh, line treatment now? Now, uh, as uh, given by uh, uh, latest uh, standard medical care uh, diabetes ADA uh, is that uh, the, uh, the evaluation for uh, the presence of ASCBD or indicators of high uh, risk for heart failure and CKD are the things that we have to first uh, uh, risk stratify. If they are present, then the the, the first choice would be uh, would be uh, either uh, uh, GLP-1 uh, receptor agonist or uh, GLP-2 inhibitors. If none, then this is uh, uh, there. Uh, there are so many other alternatives we can have. Uh, lastly, we have to consider cost and interest and the A1C work target and then we have to move forward and to uh, adjust accordingly. So uh, we have to intensify uh, if the targets are not uh, achieved. If we have to go for injectables, then primarily GLP-1 receptor agonist is, uh, is recommended in most cases uh, prior to insulin. Okay, if half of uh, the A1C target still we have to go to uh, better analog or better NPH, accordingly we have uh, many other uh, options also. Mm. 
So this is the algorithm that I may not go into details how to how to uh, 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 adjust the dose of insulin if not and how to titrate. This is uh, something like uh, uh, it's been uh, there for everyone there. So. So uh, let's move to cardiovascular disease and risk stress management. Screening and diagnosis should be done. All hypertensive patients with diabetes should monitor their blood pressure at home. So at the same time, lifestyle modification and diabetic education should be very clear to the patients as far as cardiovascular mor mor uh, morbidity is concerned. And we have to have uh, treatment goals. Individuals with uh, having AS uh, CBD or 10 year AS CBD risk of uh, 5. A blood pressure means this is a low risk for a CVD. A blood pressure target of less than 130 uh, may be an appropriate option. Individuals at lower risk for CVD, 10 year atherosclerotic cardiovascular disease risk less than 15 percent. Treatment to blood pressure target of less than 140 by uh, 90 is that is optimum. And in pregnant patients, diabetes and clear existing hypertension, blood pressure target of 110 to 135 by uh, 85 is suggested in the interest of reducing the risk of accelerated maternal hypertension and minimizing impaired fetal growth. So that is the goal for treatment for blood pressure. So there are recommendations for treatment of confirmed hypertension in people with diabetes. So if BP is, uh, the pressure is 140 and one less than 120, start one, uh, one agent. If blood pressure is 160, 100, then we start two agents that there of the presence of albuminuria or CAD will dictate the use of ARB or other molecules like uh, channel blockers. So SSBP and adverse effects of the uh, drugs uh, uh, use. So if there is nothing adverse effect continue and if there is uh, other uh, considerations then we have to change. If no meeting target or adverse effects using a drug from each of the three classes then you know, we have to consider mineral or corticoid receptor antagonist oh, and then uh, that is that maybe is a resistant hypertension. So we have to uh, resort to these uh, uh, agents uh, in the uh, in the steps forward. So repeat management is important. As we all know, we have to uh, get the targets for optimum glycemic control. Then we have to have certain uh, uh, levels of uh, repeat that. Uh, well, I think this, there is nothing new here. Triglyceride levels 150, then HDL if low uh, 40 for men and 50 for female. Then we have to uh, 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 optimize the glycemic target. So open lipid profile at the same time at the time of di uh, diabetes diagnosis and initial medical evaluation and every five years thereafter. And if under the age of 40 and more frequently you indicate it. So this is for lipid management. How are the medications that we have to have some primary prevention and secondary prevention for primary prevention in the age of 40 to 75, moderate intensity uh, uh, statin therapy is recommended in, uh, in the absence of ASCBD. Uh, with ASCBD initiated statin therapy in adults with lifestyle therapy. So diabetes with 10 year ASCBD risk of 20 years means severe or risk higher at azetimide to maximum, maximally tolerated statin therapy. This is for primary uh, uh, prevention for secondary ASCBD high intensity uh, statin is uh, added to lifestyle therapy in, with in individuals with ASCBD. So these are patients who do not tolerate intended intensity, use maximally tolerated statin dose. So diabetes of more than 70 yeah, years. Sir, we are running out of time. Would you please? Okay, uh, okay. I'm uh, just, I'm just closing. Yeah, yeah. Just closing. Just a few minutes. Thank you, sir. So aspirin, aspirin therapy has to be there, and dual anticoagulant therapy is also recommended. Then cardiovascular screening. I just jumped, and. Uh, in heart failure and reduced beta blockers should be used. So this is how uh, approach to risk uh, reduction with LTP inhibitor or GLP-1 receptor agonist. So this is 
so discuss uh, with the patient clinical preferences and priorities using LC82 inhibitor selected for GLP-1 receptor agonist. So this is uh, to be patient, uh, patient centered and should be discussed and kidney disease and risk management. So should we uh, uh, know, all of us know that creatin clearance uh, 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 Tracking clearance or or uh, 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 has to be assessed and assessed annually. So I think uh, so. These are so LGLT2 inhibitors are better and and chronic kidney disease. We have to refer to nephrologist in the in terms of the grading of albuminuria or presence of so uh, CKD staging. We have to uh, refer to. So diabetic retinopathy has to be changed, has to be checked and followed up and treatment is kept to the ophthalmologist and neuropathy has to be screened as well, we expect a, a, a yearly or a, a one to a three yearly basis and food care is uh, also very important, food care uh, should be checked and uh, inspection of the uh, uh, feet is also to be educated and signs and symptoms should be checked and this is the last slide and the risk factors, risk of ulcers or amputations in, uh, increase in people who have the following risk factors having poor glycemic control, peripheral neuropathy, cigarette smokers, food deformities, pre-ulcerative callus or cord or peripheral artery disease, history of food ulcer, previous history of amputation, visual impairment and presence of CKD. Okay. Thank you so much uh, for your patient hearing. Uh, uh, sorry for uh, uh, my uh, poor uh, network uh, coverage. Okay, thank Sir, you. thank you for such an exhaustive talk and such a nice elucidation of the whole spectrum. Really, thanks a lot for such a nice talk. Uh, definitely two, three points are very well taken that we need to individualize care for all patients, be it new onset diagnosis or uh, long duration of diabetes. We need to look into all the comorbidities and according to that our organ protection strategies must be individualized with appropriate molecule and appropriate follow-up. And definitely in a country like us where our resources are limited, Unfortunately, lot many patients do drop in follow-up, often they discontinue care and presumptively present as a new onset patient, but actually they are dropout patients, so they need to be evaluated on initial basis on a comprehensive way. The way you have shown that we have to look for tendopathy, neuropathy, CKD issues, cardiovascular protection and definitely a comprehensive strategy which need to be modified time to time has to be considered. Uh, thank you so much, sir. If there is no such questions anymore, we will close the session. Thanks once again for joining us on a Sunday morning. Thank you, sir. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Thank you, speaker. Thank you, Chairperson. Now, I would like to request Dr. Guru Prashad Vattacharya to present a small token of appreciation to our Chairperson. Dr. Guru Prashad Vattacharya. A blessing from Madurga on the day of Mohalaya. This session has been favored by the company Lopin.